Native Assimilation in EU4 All uncolonized provinces in the game have a native count. Bear in mind that sometimes that count is zero. If you don't kill the natives by using the Hunt Natives button, when your colony is finished they are able to assimilate the natives present and convert them into something called the Native Assimilation Bonus. The formula is Native Count divided by 20,000, which converts to goods produced in a ratio of 1 to 1. So a Native Assimilation Bonus of 0.1 gives you an extra 0.1 goods produced on the province. What Native Assimilation as a modifier does is it takes the number and multiplies it by a percentage. So let's say you take this province here that has 2,000 natives. If you finish colonizing it, you would have 0.1 base goods produced from the natives, and 50% Native Assimilation would take that up to 0.15 base goods produced instead. This description should be enough for 19% of the cases when you encounter it, but if you want a more in-depth explanation, feel free to stick around for the rest of the video. Okay, if you're still here, welcome! If you're feeling up to it, a like and a sub would be appreciated, but with a self share on the way, let's continue. So, Native Assimilation. The math mentioned previously is, well, pretty much all there is to it. Take the native count, divide by 20,000, and there you go. So in terms of calculation, thankfully, it's quite easy to understand. So the real question becomes now, well, is it good? And fundamentally, right away, it depends on the native counts. Let's start by taking a look at America. We here have it here. This is a map from Wikipedia which lists the native count of every single province in the game that has been, that is uncolonized, or every single province in the game that has a native count, which is quite useful for this video. Now, when we take a look at America, what is the answer that we see? The answer is no. The vast majority of the provinces have a native count of 500, sometimes going up to 1,000. In a couple cases, you see it exceeded. For example, in New York, you see around 2,500 natives and so on. However, the vast majority of these, for example, down in Florida, etc., have a native count of around 500. So if you're looking at the native counts of 500 to 1,000 natives, you are going to be getting a base bonus to goods produced of anywhere from between 0.05 goods produced to 0.025 goods produced. Or to put it another way, assuming you have 1,000 natives overall on average, since some provinces with higher counts do exist, to hit the effect of one manufactory, you will need 20 whole provinces. But then, it gets worse. Unlike being in one province, to get the buffs from workshops and other things, you will need to build 20 workshops instead of the one, requiring higher initial investment. And unless you're doing a one tag, this land will also go into a colonial nation. So you'll lose the production part of the income and only have the trade part and even then only partially. Now, colonization is still strong, but America also tends to have high competition from both the AI as well as players, if those apply in your case. So, for the most part, if you're planning to colonize this area of the world, you're just better off running 20 global settlers. Since with that, you will just end up with more provinces overall instead of trying to scrape together an extra 0.05 goods produced. But what about the rest of the world? Well, if we take a look at South America, the native counts do get better, but not by much. We have a couple of higher native count provinces, and especially down south in the uh, in the south of America that even most people don't bother colonizing, you can hit up to 2,000 natives, but realistically you're getting pretty similar number counts. 1,500 near Brazil, but not too much to really call home about. So, again, the answer is going to be remaining at no. But now let's take a look at Africa, and this is where we need to start discussing this again. Ignoring the islands of zero natives and things like that, you can see a very weird distribution of natives. We have 3,000 in a couple of the transition provinces, but a lot of the further ones tend to be much more native-based. If we take a look at the natives from the uh, Cape here, you call it, from the uh, Ivory Coast you're colonizing here, you're looking at 8,000 counts, 5,000 counts, 6,000 counts, and even a couple 9,000 counts, which are the highest counts available in the game. Furthermore, the rest of Africa in its interior has pretty consistent counts, 5,000 for this part between the Mamluks and, well, Sub-Saharan Africa, and 4,000 in the uh, Congo area of whatever's going on here, the Burundi Great Lakes area. Then when you go down to South uh, Africa, you see a couple weird exceptions. You have a couple low uh, native provinces, much like America, but then you have a couple big ones that really stand out for your native assimilation needs. So ignoring the couple of the desert provinces that you see here, for the most part, I'm going to give this area an average native count of around 5,000, with these provinces here heavily subsidizing this 4,000 region. And I'm going to be also mainly looking at the native provinces here. You may disagree with me, but that's just the number I'm going to go with for the point of demonstration. And there are plenty of 5,000 and higher native provinces for you to colonize this one. So with 5k natives a province, just not attacking them leads to a saving rate of a couple mil points. But more importantly, 0.25 goods produced per province or a quarter of a manufacturing. 
Now that's already quite decent, but it gets better. Unlike colonies, you're able to hold the slant directly, and the trade goods here are good. Furthermore, you can make the slant into trade companies, meaning you can get the investment buffs from the trade companies as well, and you don't have to give up any production income in the process. But Africa is merely a gateway into another area full of wealth. Malacca and the Philippines. The native counts there also sit in impressive counts, regularly exceeding the 4Ks, so the land is good to grab too. Furthermore, since a lot of the colonialized will be going for the New World first, if you can make it to the Cape, you can pretty much cut off the other Europeans from this area, so you can go pick up your 0.25 goods produced without any necessary modifier stacking. Just the basic, I didn't stab the natives, 0.25 goods produced. So, what if you do go for it? Well, let's set up a campaign you can do at home. And yes, I do mean you. It comes with built-in scaling difficulty. Select France for the 50% native assimilation buff from the default French ideas. Then, go and grab Exploration, Expansion and Humanist. Humanist already works nicely with the French ideas and country, as it allows you to stack heretic and heathen tolerance, and avoid things like the French wars of religion, but it also give you a policy for 50% native assimilation. You'll already be sitting at 100% native assimilation with just that and the French ideas, but you can go in further. Give the clergy the native trading policy for an extra 50% native assimilation, and then take the native colonization trading policy, yes they have the same name, which will slow down your colonization, but give you an extra 50% native trading policy, as well as a minus 50% uprising chance. So you will end up with 0% native uprising chance overall. Furthermore, there is a, you will gain access to a decision with exploration, if you have the clergy, to get another 50% native assimilation. So use that. Meaning that without any modifier, without any excessive modifier stacking, no country flips, no tag flips, nothing too special, we end up with 250% native assimilation. If you consider yourself a good player, you can also go theocracy and grab the government reform mission to civilize for an extra 35%, but I'm going to assume you don't. Anyway, as France do standard things, consolidate your position early and start opening exploration ideas. Focus your early expansion into Italy and use your missions to either secure a union in Castile and integrate them at your leisure or go ahead and kill them outright. You're not killing Castile because you need their land. I mean, their land is good, but it's more of a way to remove competition and the same plan applies for Portugal. With that done and the setup above mentioned, move into Africa. You're going to be getting 250% native assimilation, or 0.875 goods produced in each province, which, translated otherwise, is 87.5% of a manufacturing, for free. Bear in mind, you can build a manufacturing on top of that, and that goes even further by using trade companies. On the extra amazing 9k native provinces, you will actually end up with 1.575 goods produced, or 1.7325 goods produced if you're also doing the theocracy flip. Granted that that is literally the best case scenario, but that's almost a 1 and 3 quarters of an extra manufactory on top of your usual build. I hope that's a fun campaign at least. It's a colonial campaign, but a very different one from the usual New World Empire ones. And it scales quite well with difficulty. Most players should, as France, be able to eventually take over Italy and the Genoa trade node by 1821. And fighting natives should be quite simple due to the institution buffs you should have. I mean, you're France. For new players, it should be enough to entertain them. And for the experienced ones, you can go into Germany, remove England, and flip theocracy to make it more viable while also maintaining a reasonable level of challenge. So now we must ask, outside of this example campaign outlined here, is it worth it in practice? Well, if you are getting the native assimilation for free as it were, so you are garrisoning your colonies and using the 20 global settlers colonization policies, you should still avoid killing them, as it is practically free goods produced. However, the issue I find personally is that when you go for a colonial end empire, you end up filthy rich. This will make you even richer, sure, with all this native assimilation, but you don't need the money when you're going colonial, and you'll already be making enough to build every single building and do whatever you want monetarily. So unless you're doing a campaign specifically surrounded around it, like the one I described previously, I don't think it's worth going for it in practice. Simply put, it's like taking a billionaire and giving them a hundred million dollars on top. Sure, he probably won't say no, but his net worth will go from, say, 2 billion to 2.1 billion. His life isn't exactly changing much here, if at all. But 100 million to the average person is life changing, enough to make you and your kids and your kids' kids not have to work for the rest of their lives if managed well. So, yes, 1.5 goods produced in a province would be insane for Brandenburg or some country like that, but as colonial France, well, you're going to be having the billions anyway from your colonial empire. So, it's not going to be that much in terms of actual practical use. But regardless, and on that note, I hope you learned something new today. And if you didn't, I hope you at least enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.